ownership. First of all, if you follow, I've followed this woman for years. Mm. This is all Ebony be talking about. She's very pro black. Ebony single handedly was able, I'm, hold on, single handedly <laughs> was able to put a huge pause on Real Housewives of New York. They were shooting Real Housewives of New York and she kept bringing up black issues. She kept bringing up the soft racism that the mm. white women on the show were, exempl were exemplifying. She kept bringing that up and single-handedly, she was the reason why that show didn't even have a reunion that season. See, a lot of y'all don't know who the fuck y'all talking about. Y'all talking about this lady and you, you got DJ Envy talking out the side of his mouth, which I'm gonna get to too, but <laughs> this is a woman, oh, I'm gonna get his ass, this is a woman who single-handedly caused that franchise not to have a reunion because those mm. women, those women feared that uh, they would be called racist on Andy Cohen's couch, literally. So it's it's crazy how a woman like that can spend years and years and years and years advocating for mm. black people to advance being an attorney, like to, to get on reality television where reality TV is about throwing, throwing champagne, you know, um, flaunting your, your, your wealth. And she got on there and she was pro fucking black. I Had think, Ramona, Ramona, who, who is a well-liked, um, a housewife for years, had Ramona so scared to show up to reunion, they canceled the reunion. Okay. And so me as a fellow black woman, seeing this woman's journey mm -hmm. and then seeing her just say, if he was the owner of the bus, seeing her get ate up like that mm. at, at, because she don't want to date your uncle who drive the bus. Y'all, y'all not for real. Y'all are not for real. And it's all for real. Danger, no, y'all not for real. Y'all can't be. These can't be the children that we are. used to say was, was, the, was, was this was the one that Abraham said many sons. <laughs> <laughs> this the one. Said, I don't need a chance in the future. She wasn't talking about y'all. It ain't no way. Because for y'all to see this woman do that and then turn on her just by that. And then to the point where now the lady got to address shit that she never said. Mm. You know what I mean? And then get pounded on even more. When she was telling you who she was, what she stands for, and people were just, oh, now you're trying to change the conversation. Y'all changed the conversation. So now she's addressing the new conversation and she's not bringing any new aspects to it. To, she's not bringing any new aspects to it because if you actually took the time to do your research, this is stuff that Ebony has been talking about for years. And it's That's okay it. when, and it's okay when y'all get on y'all podcast microphones and y'all tell us that we're average is best. It's okay when y'all get on y'all podcast <laughs> microphone and tell black people we need more black ownership. It's okay when y'all do it. The minute the woman does it, she is crucified by everybody to the point where now you have the breakfast club who's not good at doing research before they have their mm. conversations. So now you have DJ Envy. Oh, well, I see you, you were engaged to a white man, so you're not even pro-black. Mind you, DJ Envy is someone who has had Ebony K. Williams on his platform many times. Many yeah, times. I've seen, talking yeah. about pro-black issues. Ha talking about her book, Bet on Black. So for you to turn on your sister like that, I ain't never seen you have Kevin Kevin Samuels, who is now worm food. I never saw you bring his ass up to the breakfast club and chastise his ass like that, but you do that to her. That is fucked up. And it just shows you how we're not we're not serious. We're not mm. serious. That's my point. Okay, no, I can, I can take some aspects of what you said in there, right? Which I've heard many times from the, from the audience too, right? So, so the larger conversation comes around obviously black women in general and some of the things, some of the experiences that you you've had um, with the opposite gender, the black men, right? Yeah. If we if we focus it strictly on ebony, I don't make this is and this is coming from a perspective I look at. I look at things from a relationship standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. No matter how great she is at her job, her advocacy, and how great she is at being pro-black, 
it doesn't make you a great partner. And so this is the thing that we have to be very careful with because oftentimes we will confuse how great somebody is out when there's loads of men like this too. You, you ladies know, they're great on the outer shell, oh, look amazing, look, look sweet, look like good food, right? Look like good food. But actually when you tap in, the food mm -hmm. ain't that great. What am I saying? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is I'm not going to confuse her great efficacy and her great working that she does in the community and confuse it with what how she relates to people. Because if you're really for the community, you'd have never addressed it that way. If you want men to stand up, you don't address us like that. Right? Because you understand how men work. That's not how you address us. Now, what, how, hey, how are we supposed to address y'all? Because okay. here's the thing, right? So like you said, she might not be a good partner, right? Iyanka, I mean, she said it her own words, not me. She well, said it her said, own words. Right? She said yeah. this. If you watch the interview, Iyanla never, never addressed that. So here's the thing, too. Iyanla was not the best person to have that discussion with at all. Because Iyanla didn't really get down to the roots. She didn't get down to the roots of what Ebony was trying to say during Black Women's Black Mama Month. Okay? Ebony came to her and was like, listen. I'm having trouble with my femininity. You said black women are masculine. That's what that's mm -hmm. what that's what Iana was saying. Mm -hmm. So here goes Ebony asking her, how do I rest with my femininity? Iana didn't really really get to the root of that. She was kind of giving like general responses and she gave she gave examples of how her herself she wasn't a good mother, you know, and you know, she she Iyala has had three husbands, okay? So something's not clicking there as well. So still, I don't think that that was the best place to have that discussion. However, I do feel like Ebony was very receptive once again. Now, here's the thing, right? Again, how do y'all want Black women to talk to y'all? Mm. We, we cry. Mm -hmm. We yell. We give y'all therapy. Y'all don't want it until it's too late. I have black. Mm. I have several black therapist friends mm. who say the same thing to me all the time. When black couples come in, it's too late. It's too late you. because the wife has been asking the husband for years or for a certain amount of time. They come in when it's too late. You don't want the therapy, okay? You want you don't want a job. You want to have podcast. When y'all say podcast, say podcast, podcast. <laughs> you don't want a job, okay? Like what do y'all want? What like what do you what do y'all want us to do? Like mm. literally, and and like in my in my interview, I I said this. Um, I myself like I don't do a good job at dating. I know I I, I don't do a good job at at consistently dating. Mm. And to be honest, I just feel like dating is just not a safe place for me. It's that. just not. It's, it has not been a safe place for me. Why why do you say it's not been a safe place? Because I feel experience? like I feel seen by Ebony, especially like the my last relationship that I had, it was right bef 